this is a uh, meetup number 63, so we've been running this for quite a few years now. Uh, we've got quite a lot of people here tonight, so it's an interactive engagement, so feedback, ask questions, that's what it's all about, so get involved. So for tonight, thank you to our sponsors who make all this happen. So we have um, all of our sponsors up here, and two speakers tonight, which is Telstra, uh, who's speaking, and Sam from the Cloud Guru, so they're speaking this evening. So thank you to our sponsors. Uh, who else is here from our sponsors? Anyone else around who's here from our sponsors? Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, so tonight we have our introductions, and then we have our lightning talk with David, who will spend, a, how many slides? Five minutes, 10 minutes? 10, ten minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes, okay. Hopefully it won't be dead by uh, slides, but anyway. So 10 minutes to just give a quick lightning talk. Uh, I think it's a good one, which is going back to basics, talking about VPCs and, and their infrastructure. Um, then we have Pete Galloway from Telstra, who's going to talk to us about Telstra programmable networks, which sounds great. Pete's over there hiding under the stairs, the Commodore 64 t-shirt, <laughs> not an AWS t-shirt. Uh, and then we have, but then we have a break with some networking, uh, pizza and beers, and then we kick into round two, uh, which is Dan Parker from a Cloud Guru, scaling a serverless team with automation. So it sounds interesting. Excellent. And with that, I'll hand over to David, who's going to give us a quick uh, lightning talk. Thank you, David. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, usually, um, I give a, a few minutes on what's new in AWS, but uh, strangely, this month there hasn't been a great deal, so I'll probably leave that until uh, next month, so there's a bit more to talk about. Um, so, what I thought I would um, do is give a, um, an introduction to uh, VPC, VPC 101, and first slide, please. Um, now these, these are some of the objects that uh, you'll use in the VPC. I'm not going to talk about all these, there just isn't enough time to go to any depth on any of these. I'm really going to focus on how you set up a VPC uh, with security, fault tolerance and high availability in mind. Um, so I'm not going to mention too much about uh, customer gateways, VPN here. Um, uh, enhanced networking and elastic network interfaces are really going to focus on uh, setting up your um, subnets, your wrap tables, and your permissions. Um, okay. So, um, we see this a, a quite a lot going into a customer site and they've got all their instances in a public network going out through a gateway um, and all with uh, public IP addresses, which is not particularly secure. So this is one of the reasons I thought I'd give a talk on VPC. Uh, we think it's obvious, but maybe it's not. Uh, when we go into a customer site, the first thing we will do is we'll install what we call foundation services, which is the VPC and how you're going to control ingress and egress out of your VPC. Um, and once you get that right, um, then the rest is just fall, well, doesn't fall into place, but at least you've got somewhere nice and safe to put it. Um, also, if, you, um, if you're going to be studying for any of the certification courses, you will need to know VPC very thoroughly. Um, it's a foundation for a lot of the um, solution architects. Uh, Sorry, it's one-on-one, is that for very like, pretty cats? What's VPC stand for? <laughs> Just about to get to that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, so if you're going to be studying for the exams, you, you, you do need to know this stuff. And of course, you can use one of the uh, Cloud Guru courses to do that. Um, the other thing is um, that you'll notice that VPC doesn't have an E in front of it. Now, a lot of the Amazon services have E in front of them. E, EC2, uh, ECS, which means elastic. So, change. VPC. No, you have to decide what you're going to do before you set this up. Now, the first thing you're going to decide is, uh, let's say you're going to go and you're going to create a default, no, not a default, you're not going to use a default VPC. Uh, you're going to use your own VPC, you're going to create it from scratch. Um, so you'll go in and uh, what you'll get is your VPC. Now, the first thing you have to decide on is, is your uh, cedar block. Now, this is important if you're going to use uh, a connection to a off-site data center or back to the business. And if you want to use a IPSEC VPC tunnel, you can't have your CEDA blocks overlapping because then you'll get problems. So you have to make that uh, decision early on. 
Because once you decide on that cedar block, you're, you're stuck with it. You can't change it. So when you create a um, custom DPC from the um, console, they do give you some um, little wizards to help you set up what's, uh, particular types of subnets. But if you want to learn about DPC, I'll just, I wouldn't go with that. I set everything up by hand. Um, and what you will get is, you get your cedar block, you will get a router, and you will get a default route table. And I've just got to flip through this. I just want to go forward with it. And you'll notice here, this will be your default route table when you create a new VPC. And you'll see that if your cedar block is 10.1.0.0 slash 16, then the local target means that anything within that cedar block is able to, well, there's a path to everything else. You're not able to communicate with it yet, but there is a, a definite path for every other IP address in that cedar block. And that is um, by default. Um, let's go back. Go back. Yeah. So, um, let's talk about uh, 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 planning this out. So you plan for expansion. Uh, if you're going to create your subnets, now you've got, if you've got a slash 16 cedar block, you've got 65,000 IP addresses to play with. Now that's normally enough. Um, so don't be too spruppy with your IP addresses and subnets. And also don't be too big. So you've got to be realistic, you know. Um, just this week, uh, I was tasked with going and creating a couple of uh, workspaces in a custom environment. And they had a simple AD, and they had 20 workspaces, I went to create a new one, error. I thought, oh, I'm hitting uh, Amazon Web Services limits. Got the limit, limit raised, tried it again, error. They put their simple AD into a slash 28 seater, which gives them about 11 IP addresses. Because um, Amazon, as you well know, if you've got a subnet, you've got a, um, a network and a broadcast address that's taken. But Amazon will also take three other IP addresses from that range. So if you've got a really small uh, subnet, then you've lost five IP addresses automatically. So don't be scrimpy with them. Because once, as I said, once, you, once you create these things, it's very difficult to change them. Um, also, they're considering to, to corporate networks, and that's your first decision there. Um, don't have overlap IP space, save space for the future. Uh, they've also, there is uh, availability for IPv6, but we won't go into that. Next one. So, you've created your VPC. Now what you want to do is, you want to build in high availability. So you want to be able to use all the availability zones that you've got within that VPC, which is within a region. And so you can then build your subnets inside the uh, each availability zone. Uh, now, I've got a question here for you. I'm going to ask a couple of questions as we go along. Um, can subnets span availability zones? No. no. Oh, that's good. good. <laughs> yes. That's very true. That's very important. That be, that's almost 100% certain to get that type of question in the uh, exams. Um, so what we want to do here is we've got a subnet for each one. You. Right. So what you can see here, we've got public subnets and then private subnets here. Now the reason for breaking this up is um, you don't want to have your applications being exposed to the internet. If you're going to have something exposed to the internet, you're going to have a load or something or something else, not your applications. Um, now you can you can create a new uh, subnet and call it public subnet, but that's not going to give you connecti connectivity to <coughs> the internet. So, what do you need to make a public subnet available to the internet? Internet gateway. Internet gateway. Oh, thank you. He's good. He's good. This guy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, just to bring that point home. Now, what we said before is that this basic this route table means that all these instances, um, they have a route to each other. They can't communicate yet because we haven't got our security groups set up. So they're blocked. By default, everything's blocked. 
And as you can see, these all communicate with each other with this router. Um, um, and as you can see, the public subnet has to have an internet gateway and then it can go out. These don't have an internet gateway, therefore there's no access to the internet. Now, if you want, if you want to get access to the internet from the private subnets, but still block them from anything coming in, you would use uh, either a NAT instance or you can use a NAT gateway. So I'm not going to do a lot of detail about the difference. One's a service by Amazon. Because um, sometimes if you've got a lot of traffic going through a NAT instance, uh, that can be a, a roadblock. Now a NAT gateway, I think it's got up to 10 gigabytes a second, so you can put a lock through one of those. It's a service, um, so it's, you don't have to worry about update, upgrading the AMIs, etc., etc. Also, with this, with this scenario, this is only in one AZ. So if the AZ goes down, you've got problems. So you might want to make that multi-AZ. Um, so that would be, that, that's how you would set up, a uh, basic setup there, to allow instances that are in a private subnet to go out to the internet. Now, there's a lot of ways around even doing away with this. You could say, what do you want these instances to have access to? It might be to repos, it might be to other things, and you can just make those private or put them on S3. They don't need to go out. The other thing as well is with the NAT instance, you can control uh, what web pages people go to. So if you want to block for some reason, I don't know why, maybe someone's got access to Facebook from one of these, you can block it in here by putting in the script proxies. So it's all going through the one thing, so you've got a lot of control points in this. Now, there's one thing that's not on here, and I haven't got a slide before, um, is you want to be able to control who gets in as well. Because if you want access to these, if you're a developer or you're an engineer, you want to get access to these, then you need to be able to get onto this network. So you use a, a VPN machine that you put in one of these, um, and that will allow you to get access to the whole network. Okay, now, so what we've talked about here is routing. So um, all these instances that are in all the public and private setting, they can all talk to each other uh, if they were given permission to. And the way that Amazon set this up, uh, by default, everything's blocked, all ports are blocked. You have to go and open them up. And there's several ways you can do this. Um, you can use security groups and you can use NACLs, network address control lists. The, um, and you can see this here will show you what the differences are. Uh, it's very important to know these differences. And you, again, if you're going to be uh, going to sit the exams, you do need to know this. They will ask you. They'll, uh, they won't ask you a simple question like this. They'll give you a scenario, and you have to go and work it out, knowing these properties. So, I think this. This, unfortunately, it's a little bit fuzzy, but I think this um, this diagram will explain how knuckles and security groups work. So, here's your ingress. Two minutes left. Oh my God, a million time. Yeah. Uh, here's your, your ingress. So you got your internet gateway. Um, virtual private gateway, and here's your router. The first thing your router's going to go to is a route table, then it goes to your NACL. And NACLs are applied to a subnet. A NACL is a little bit like, um, <coughs> like an IP table, in that it can block, uh, so it can allow and it, and it can deny. Uh, it's unfortunately, the IP tables, you can, you can um, state what the, the state of, of the uh, rule is. But with these, these are all stateless. So you have to control in and out with a, a NACL. Um, as I said, these apply to subnets. And then your security groups, they apply to instances. The security groups are whitelists, so they can only allow. So if you allow a block of IP addresses through your security group, you can't then go and block them into. You can't do a blacklist. You would need to come to your NACL and blacklist it in the NACL, because you can do it from the NACL. Um, and this lists the basic properties and the differences up here. Um, again, with the security groups are additive, so everything adds up uh, with, a, with a NACL. It's the first rule, and then it's out. So it, just, it, it will go down from the top, just like an, uh, an IP table. Okay. Um, that last thing I'm going to talk about is 
uh, you can split up your, um, say you've got a development environment, test environment, production environment, best thing you can split it up into different separate VPCs. And then you can do the VPC parent. In this one, you've got a, a central VPC and all of these are peripheral. What you might do is have your VPN come into here and then they can go to these. Now, you can't go into this one and then go through into this one. You can't do that. You only go from one to the other. Um, so that's what you can do with uh, multiple VPCs multiple and VPC pairing. And the last thing I'll mention, I think, looks like I'm running out of time here. Um, the other thing that to do, and this is to do with the routing, S3, normally when you access, you're going to access S3, you will go, say if you had a, had a um, corporate a data center here, this had no internet access and you wanted to go to S3, you'd have to go out into the corporate data center, into the internet and into your S3. So what the, Amazon have done is they make S3 endpoints. So you, from your local network, you can connect directly to S3. Now, the difference in speed is quite amazing if you were uh, transferring a, a WordPress website and all the content, you go out and do this, rather than doing this, there's a huge reduction in speed. And of course, uh, it costs you more money. So <coughs> I think, uh, there's another slide left, I think. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that, um, I'm running out of time. Anyone got any quick questions? Questions, take a couple of questions. Just a quick um, why, why would you want to have the seeders to overlap like for a VPC? You, you can't overlap them. Before. No, you can't. Oh, you wouldn't want no, to. you wouldn't. No, 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 it's dangerous. Because then it doesn't know where to go. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry, I made. It, I should have made that clear. Yes. Net instance versus net gateway. Sorry. Net instance versus net gateway. Yes. One slash Amazon. Yes. And why don't you do yourself? So net instance you do yourself. Yeah. So you'd set that up. But, uh, so what we would do is have a cloud formation script. It sets all this up. So that's our foundation services. So it sets all up, all those uh, networks. Uh, so the uh, subnets and put in a net gateway and a VPN server. That would be the basics. Did you want to? Oh, oh just so, straighten your hair. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So, again, this is. Did you find this useful? Can I get a show of hands who found this useful? Would like to see more kind of. Yeah. Okay. So, the goal of the meetup is obviously driven by you guys. Can you kind of let us know by the meetup page if you want to see more of this type of stuff um, or more advanced stuff, right? So, there's, there's two differences, and the crowds are normally spread evenly. So. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, what do you want to see? It's difficult because some people here, obviously, this stuff, is, they know this back to front. Other people don't cool. know this stuff. So. But, nice one. Thank you very much, okay. David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then, next we have here, uh, here we go, Mr. Commodore 64. Do you want the green or the red? Uh, I don't care. You're okay. You can. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, good evening. Um, so, every day, I think that's less and less me as I get older. <laughs> <laughs> No wireless technology. Uh, so as you can tell um, by my t-shirt, I'm a pretty old guy. Uh, if you don't know what this t-shirt means, don't come up and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a little bit about myself. I've um, uh, been at Telstra for about 20 months now. Uh, I work in our cloud team. Prior to that, I was actually at AWS. I joined AWS in September, October 2012, just before they launched the Sydney region, uh, and when it was still funny to ask if I was going to sell books about it. Uh, prior to that, I had uh, about 11 years at, uh, at Cisco, so love my networks um, and love my cloud. Uh, this is the, the only slide out of the official deck. Uh, I went through the official deck and it's all, all it's, a modern business in a dynamic digital age needs an intelligent kind of network which adapts to your intelligence and adapts to your needs to let it thrive on. And I thought if I delivered that, you guys are all armed with empty beer bottles and uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of us is going to have a bad evening. So, um, so I've changed that a little bit um, and simplified it. So, software defined networks, SDNs, are pretty simple. I apologise to people I'm going to put my back to. Uh, it's a network that's available on demand, uh, it's consumption based, it's scalable, uh, it has some end in the case of Telstra and we're building out and have built out an SD, a WAN, a software defined wide area network, um, it has a global reach and if you look at all those things, um, it sounds a lot like cloud. So very exciting for me uh, because my two worlds are coming together. 
way they come together, and David has um, stolen a little bit of my thunder, but that's okay, uh, is Direct Connect. So Direct Connect is a way uh, for customers and users to connect to AWS without going out of the internet. That's basically it. So customers use uh, Direct Connect to connect their existing wide area networks, their existing facilities, without going out of the internet, straight into AWS. It's a <coughs> networking into AWS is a fascinating topic and uh, you can spend hours on it. Uh, a couple of things you need to learn. So as David said, you can connect to a virtual private, um, a virtual private cloud, VPC. So this is, allows you to connect your existing facilities, resources, uh, what have you, straight into a VPC. It doesn't go anywhere near the internet. Uh, some of the AWS services, S3 was the biggest one, and, and uh, about a year ago, AWS made this a lot easier. But you had to connect uh, through what was called a public IP address into the public IP address space to access region services. So an, an AZ-based service, such as EC2, can sit happily inside of a VPC, uh, but something like S3 sat outside, so customers would have to get two connections uh, into AWS so they could connect to S3 and they could connect to, um, to their VPC. As I said, about 12 months ago that's been fixed. <coughs> it is something to, uh, it is a bit of a gotcha though, if, you, if you're not going to use a VPC and you want to connect to some of these region-based services. For those of you who um, like to play with, with networking, so a direct connect from the, from the AWS perspective, they give you a port, and we're going to talk how that's changed a little bit, but they'll give you a port, a 1 gig port or a 10 gig port, and you can have multiple connections. So on a single connection, you can have uh, multiple connections. Why would you want to do that? Uh, you're going to have multiple VPCs. <coughs> so multiple VPCs, you know, might be production, might be marketing, whatever. You want to maintain separation. So Ethernet has a way of keeping that separate whole way through, and that's called dot bottom queue. Uh, another trap for young players is that um, Direct Connect is a layer three service. So the way you're connecting to AWS, whether it's uh, the public space or the private space is, is through layer three, it's IP, it's routing. So I'm going to show you um, uh, this evening a lot around the layer two. You still need to do the layer three connectivity for the service to work. If you just hook up the layer two, you're not going to get out of the service and you're going to be sad. So Telstra programmable networks, that's our software defined WAN, our SD WAN. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, I've got five key concepts on the screen. One of them is the internet. I think that's covered. Uh, so the four others uh, are POPs, and for those of you with a network background, that's not a new term. Uh, so that's a point of presence. So that's a that's a point on the Telstra network that you're that you're connected into. Uh, exchanges. So we call them. <coughs> you might soon refer to as um, exchange partners. They're third party providers of services that are connected uh, to the Telstra programmable network. So an example of an exchange partner is Amazon Web Services through Direct Connect. Uh, VNFs. I don't know why it's got such an interesting acronym. VNF is a virtual network function. You can think of it as a virtual appliance. So a VNF could be a virtual router, could be a virtual firewall, could be a virtual light balancer, could be a, a virtual uh, WAN accelerator. So similar to the ways that you can grab images off AWS Marketplace, pop them on EC2, and you've got a virtual device running inside your VPC, here's a way to put them outside your VPC as well. And VNFs follow the same characteristics of, uh, of SDN. So they're available on demand, they're needed, you pay for what you use, get the right size, um, and so forth. And the last one is flows. So flows is the term that we use in the TPN to refer to a circuit. Whoops. A bit of a dollar bike. <coughs> so that's the screen. So uh, when you log in, that's what you get to see. So that's my topology, which has nothing in it. Uh, so exchange partners. So uh, as I said, Amazon's an exchange partner. So I go in, I set up an ex uh, Amazon uh, as an ex a point that I want to put into my topology. Get out of the way. Uh, so I select the region I want to uh, connect to, uh, the location. So <coughs> within Sydney, there are two gateways. One's at Equinix, uh, SY3. The other one's at um, Global Switch. There's a third one in Melbourne. It's not currently connected, but will be. I select the bandwidth, and I'm gonna, I'll talk more about that later. And then I put in my uh, customer account ID. Now, this is the AWS console. So 
one of the things to be aware of is that when we're sending up a connection into your AWS account, you need to authorise that connection. So the um, <coughs> excuse me, Direct Connect is a metered service, just like pretty much all AWS services. So from a security perspective and a billing perspective, you need to give the OK for that. <coughs> what, um, what is a, a bit of a trick is that you don't get a notification that there's a, there's a connection waiting for you to accept. Okay, so you need to log on to the console or use the CLI, have a look to see if the connection's there before you can accept it. Come back, I put in my point of presence, and I now add that as an, excuse me, as a point that I want to connect to. Oh, excuse me. Here's the parameters that I can play with. So I can give it a name, I can set the bandwidth, I can set the latency. So this, as I said, this is a uh, software-defined WAN. So if you're providing, if you've got connectivity, say from Sydney to somewhere in Asia, you might be, um, uh, depending on what uh, the application running across that, latency may or may not be a factor that you want to consider. Uh, I set the duration. So we start at one hour and then go up to a number of years. And then what I want to happen at the end of that term, uh, I put the connection in and away we go. So I've actually got that as a video. <laughs> so I wanted to give a demo, but again, <coughs> empty box of video, demo gods being what they are, may not work. So uh, <coughs> I did a screen grab of me setting up what I just described. So if you can press play on that. Is that playing? So, I wanted to show that there's no notifications. This is a big trap and that lots of people get stuck by it. Um, so I need to go into Direct Connect, into the console, I can look at my existing connections, and I see that there's no connections there. All right, so that, I'm just showing that there's nothing up my sleeve. So now I go across, I set up that exchange partner. So uh, it's gonna come up with a, a menu. So these are the exchange partners we work with. <coughs> Amazon's the one we're interested in. We also work with Equinix, we work with um, Amazon VX. Uh, select the bandwidth. Uh, and then I put in my account ID, very slowly. <laughs> Just make sure you get it right. Yeah, I was literally copying it off a piece of paper. Uh, <coughs> I send the request. So now Telstra is talking to AWS, saying we've had a connection request for this account for a 50 meg uh, circuit. Do you accept that connection? And now it's waiting for you. So that's why I've gone back to the console. You see my notifications. The only notification I've got is uh, AWS telling me that they're going to add GST to my bill from the 1st of July. Thank you, Matt. So that's my new connection. Uh, this is the CLI. Um, lost the top bit of the screen. Um, so I've just done this out the connections and you can see uh, now I've got a connection and uh, my connection say is ordering. So you, you, can, you can build your own scripts for this. So now I go back to the connection, uh, hit yes, I understand I'm going to be charged for this and, and uh, yes, I'm okay this, about this connection and I accept. Now we've, now we've accepted, we, we sit in pending uh, for, about, um, for about five minutes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I delete that bit. Uh, but so at this point we're waiting for AWS uh, to come back and say the connection's all good. So while I'm waiting, um, I'm going to go and, come on Peter, I'm going to go and add my first point of presence. Uh, so that's, um, so maybe I've got uh, some, some gear in a uh, data center that's uh, linked on the TPN. Uh, so I go and add an item, go down to my menu, menu I want to, uh, you can see on the menu I've got my points of presence for the exchange with VNF Marketplace, going to uh, a data center, add a connection, and I can change the name of it, or I can move it around. Could change the name, didn't. <laughs> so now... So this is a physical data set that I would do connecting to. Yes, that's right. So now I'll put some... Magic, hopefully happening. Fast forward about four or five. Yeah, I'm refreshing. So we're waiting. 
around four minutes, 50 seconds later. Mm. Uh, I've done it a few times, around about five minutes. I don't know what Amazon's doing, but I know. It takes them five minutes. It must be very hard and very important. So now we're back, the connection's available. So basically you're just putting the glue between your AWS VPC and, and your physical data center. Not quite, not there yet. So now, uh, as you can see, we've, uh, we've got the connection, uh, AWS is gone, yep, we've got this connection. Uh, now we add the glue to the direct connect gateway. <coughs> so now I go to AWS, I put that endpoint in Equinix. Um, that's my endpoint with a rather hideous name. Select done, and now that puts him in my topology. Uh, I'm going to drag it around because I like things to line up and look nice. <coughs> I can change the name to something that's a bit more human friendly. Still a slow typer. PG PG tips. Uh, because I care if I wrote test twice. Uh, and that's it, I've made my connection. So here's where I get to enter those um, parameters. Uh, so I can put in a nice friendly name, a description, so others can see it. Um, what I didn't call out is the, the VLAN. So the VLAN at the AWS end is specified by AWS. <coughs> but at my end, which is where it's going to connect into my network, I can pick whatever VLAN uh, that I wish that I'm not currently using. That's me drawing attention to the VLAN. Uh, so I can specify the hours, days, weeks, and I can specify the renewal option. <coughs> so um, I put it to auto disconnect. So what's going to happen at the end of that one hour, which is the minimum period, it will just drop the connection. You can specify it to, uh, to roll over if, if you wish, uh, but it will keep going for the duration that you specified. Uh, and for the canny viewers, you would have seen that the, um, uh, the, the total contract value uh, would have changed as we changed some of those parameters. So I've taken the speed from one megabit per second up to ten megabits. Uh, excuse me, ten gigabits per second. And obviously, the rate goes up depending on that the latency and the contract duration. <coughs> so the more you commit to, the lower the rate. And the building of cap is the building. Yes, that's right. So now I've hit deploy, and now it's going away to build that network or that network connection. So the SLA on this is ten minutes. I'm not going to make you wait for ten minutes. Uh, but uh, it, it does take uh, a minute or so. Um, so I just want to talk about the bandwidth. So you would have seen the bandwidth options with 50, 100, 2, 3, 4, 500. So we use a service from AWS called Host Teams Connect, and that's a way for their partners, such as Telstra, to be able to provide these um, uh, network connectivity services. So it's nailed up, 50. I, I don't have to put 50 on, on my side. You saw I put one megabits per second. But within that, uh, on the AWS port, uh, it's in those increments I just listed out. There's a cost for each of those. I think the 50 megabits per second starts at three cents an hour, um, so not that much. Uh, and then it goes up nearly to 30 cents an hour for the 500 megabits per second connection. It's almost done. <laughs> Any questions while waiting for the network to do it all video? <coughs> Uh, and that's it, that's the point. <laughs> so, yeah. So the only bit I had to speed up was the AWS bit, not the whole. Ask a question. Yeah, go for it, man. How do you get on the Telstra programs or network? Before you can use this, what's the steps of onboarding? <coughs> you open an account, you go see your account manager, and if you don't know who that is, you can drop me an email. I'll the details at the end of that. Uh, so are we back at the presentation? Yeah, yep. <laughs> uh, so these are the exchange partners, you would have seen them come up. So. Uh, if you're on the TPM, we can get you to any of these people. Uh, as you can see, the only public cloud provider that we're working with at the moment is uh, Amazon. Matt, they wanted others, but I fought them the whole way. It's only Amazon. 
Um, also, one thing that I'm really excited about is that the exchange partner, if you like, is next IP. So, uh, why I'm excited about this is because a lot of customers use uh, Telstra's IP VPN service, next IP, and has uh, great connectivity. So, you don't have to be in a data center. If you're just on the next IP network, you can connect to TPM and we can get you to any of these places. Uh, it's not just Sydney or <coughs> Australia as well. So the TPN, which is built on off the back of uh, PacNet, which is a company that joined uh, Telstra about uh, two, or two years ago. Uh, so we reach right across the globe. A lot of uh, happening in inside of Asia, North America, uh, and the UK as well. Uh, and we spoke about the VNF. So we have a VNF marketplace. Uh, so the vendors that we have available. Uh, a list behind me. So, for instance, Cisco, you can have a virtual Cisco router. You can fire it up, you pay for it by the hour, and it's a full blown router. So, you can tell Ned or, or um, SSH in and do a show run and have the time of your life. Uh, so, where so for how customers are using this and, and where I think they might be able to use it. So, uh, you can see you can direct, you can connect into AWS. Uh, you can connect your layer three, so your IP VPN service into AWS. Uh, you can connect your your Australian data center or wherever that data center might be to AWS regions that are in other parts of the world. So as I said, it's not just uh, Sydney. One I'm <coughs> interested in is um, uh, cloud trunking, which is the term I've just invented, and I'm going to trademark that. Uh, so if for whatever crazy reason yeah, you're doing some work with AWS and you wanted for some reason to connect that to another, oh, now, now it's on. Um, connect that to a, another oh, public cloud provider. Of course. Oh, 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 oh. Um, without tromboning that through your network, TPM is something that could uh, let you do that. I haven't seen anybody doing that. I'm waiting for the first one. Uh, and as you saw, the, the connections, you're not making a commitment for, for a month or, or so uh, minimum time is, a, is an hour. So what I think is going to happen is people start using this in line with the way that they're building VPC. So you bring up the VPC, you only want to use it for an hour or a day or a week, and bring up that network connectivity with that as well, and then blow it away when you finish. So when the uh, data center is talking to AWS, it talks to a private address, a private IP address. So we're not, um, we're not at IP. Layer. Um, so uh, you do need to configure the layer three. If you the, the demonstration I showed, you would need to have a layer three device in your network. You need to go up to the console. You would need to connect a virtual private gateway to that very connect port we just made. Put your layer three configuration on that. Connect it into the VPC. Uh, and yes, there's an API. So we've got our very fancy GUI, um, but you can also. Script it. At the moment, the API is not public, uh, but it's available uh, you know, to customers who are working with us under NDA. Um, and we've got like, a large, couple of large financial institutions playing for that. And that is my presentation. <laughs> Question. <laughs> yes, that's that's correct. So, uh, from the, the, the short answer is yes, right? It, it, um, because they're all logically separate from each other. So, you can have this connection goes to this account, this connection goes to this account, uh, and then within that account, you connect to the VPC. Any other questions? No questions. All understand it? <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Going to another random stuff in between that? Random stuff. Yeah, the uh, so uh, what you might have to do today is, uh, is bring all that traffic back right into the heart of your network and then route it out. So um, so so that's trombone. So you, you bring it in as as IP traffic and then you're routing it back out to another provider. So what this might allow you to do is build a direct connection from provider cloud provider A to cloud provider B. 
So this is all available now, and it comes, wow. on, and it comes on the same Telstra bill? Yes. Or a different one? No. Same one. Same one. Cool. Any other questions? No more questions? Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you very, thank you very much for your time.